I was a bit surprised when strong rumors about the release of a new version of the Mavic Mini started to be all over the net. To be frank, I was rather expecting a Mavic 3 to come out first. The leaking gossips were talking about very important features being added to the new drone. In this video I will show you a roundup of all the new features of this new drone, which is now named Mini 2. Basically, Mavic has been dropped. I will take it out for a first flight to check transmission, maneuverability, battery life, noise and wind resistance, and finally I will do a quick test of video and photo capabilities. In the following weeks I will of course do plenty of in-depth videos about this tiny beast, so I strongly suggest to subscribe to my channel. The Mini 2 looks very similar to the Mavic Mini. The only way to tell them apart is the different color of the propellers. The only other difference we notice are a USB-C port instead of the micro USB on the back below the battery slot and the new LCD light above the camera. Under the battery, the USB-C port and the micro SD slot there is a LED which also functions as a button, which gives access to a new quick transfer function to upload files to a mobile device. There is also a new propeller holder to be used when the drone is on your bag. Of course, there are still no obstacle avoidance sensors, apart from the two at the bottom. But that was expected, as the new drone remains below the very important threshold of 250 grams in weight, which is very important, as according to local regulations, staying below this limit might mean no need for registration, no exam, and more possibility for urban flying. As usual, it is possible to buy the Fly More combo for around $150 extra, and it is something I do recommend for serious users, as you get two extra batteries, an extremely useful charging hub for three batteries, a nice bag, some extra cables, and a few spare propellers. Sadly, there are no ND filters supplied, as in the Mavic Air 2. The remote controller is almost exactly the same as the one in the Mavic Air 2, and for me this is excellent news. Some people might argue that it is bigger and heavier, it is actually bigger than the drone itself, but apart from that, the new controller is much more enjoyable to use. The grip is very solid, and all the buttons fall perfectly on the fingers. The two sticks can be unscrewed and stored on the lower part for transport. On the front, there are four LED monitoring the charge level. They also flash until the aircraft is connected and then turn solid. In the middle, there is the return to home button, which also functions as pause. A three-way selector for the flying modes, Cine, Normal and Sport, and the power button. On the top left, a FN button, which can be set to toggle the tilt on the gimbal. On the top right, another one to toggle between photo and video. On the top side of the controller, a scrolling wheel to control the tilt of the gimbal. If used in conjunction with the FN button, it controls the digital zoom level, as we will see later. To the right, a button to shoot a photo or start-stop recording video, according to the mode we are in. The remote device sits at the top of the controller, giving a much better view compared to the old method. There is a clamp to fit the smartphone. I only use tablets with my drones, and although the clamp does not extend enough to fit a tablet, I can still secure my tablet very nicely without needing any extra devices. Excellent. The cable for connection with a mobile device is stored inside the clamp, and this is again very useful. Finally, the antennas are built into the clamp, so they don't need any sort of adjustment. To me, the new controller is a huge improvement. But let's get this baby up in the air and see how it behaves. 
First thing I notice is that the Mini 2 feels definitely more powerful than the original Mini, almost in Mavic Air 2 territory, but not quite. The maximum speed has been increased to 36 mph from 29 in the Mini. According to DJI, the Mini 2 can handle wind much better than the original one, up to level 5 or up 24 mph gusts. That would be excellent, as wind handling was certainly a weak point of the Mini. It was often quite hard to bring it back home into a medium strength wind. There is no wind at all at the moment here, so I will test the behavior in windy conditions in another video. A huge feature of the Mini 2 is the adoption of the legendary OcuSync transmission system. And in fact the signal is very strong, even at relatively long distances. Although, remember that by regulation, in most cases, flights are limited to visual line of sight. The Wi-Fi transmission of the original Mini was very much hit and miss, according to which part of the world you're in. Apparently it works better in the US, but where I live, in a relatively urban area in Europe, I had huge problems of, of latency, peak selection of the image, and loss of signal. The system of the Mini 2 seems to be solid like a rock. Although I was surprised to find at times a bit of latency in the video signal from the drone to the screen on my tablet. But I would not worry too much as it is the very first version of the firmware and some adjustment will come very soon. It is very enjoyable to fly in all three flight modes, Cine Smooth, Normal and Sport. In Sport mode the gimbal jumps quite frequently. It seems to happen even when flying a constant speed forward, but only in sport mode. I do not consider it a disturbing problem, as in my opinion sport mode is not really meant for filming, but rather for moving to a place to another, mostly when taking photos. There is a possibility to extend the tilt of the gimbal upwards by an extra 20 degree above 90 degrees, and this is very useful. The speed and the smoothness of both the gimbal tilt and the yaw, the horizontal rotation of the camera, are now adjustable independently for each flying mode. Seen as smooth, normal and sport. Just like in the Mavic Air 2. I have done a test of battery life by hovering on the same spot, and one battery lasted for 26 minutes, against 27 for the original Mavic Mini and 29 for the Mavic Air 2. Here is a noise test against the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic 2 Pro. The Mini 2 is definitely the quietest of all. Also, the pitch is lower and more pleasing. Another major improvement in the Mini 2 compared to the original Mini is that it can now shoot video in 4K. And this is obviously huge. The maximum frame rate remains at 30 frames per second at 4K at 2.7K and 60 frames per second at 1080p. The Mavic Mini has always been considered a beginner drone due to the very affordable price, but since it can be used in urban environment with less restrictions due to its size, it could also have been a very useful tool for professional videographers in specific urban situations. But the lack of 4K video was not really allowing any professional use. Also, the previous Wi-Fi transmission did not perform particularly well in urban environment. With the adoption of 4K and OcuSync, the Mini 2 has now its place in the bag of serious videographer in some specific situations. The bitrate of the Mini 2 is 100 Mbps against the 40 Mbps of the original Mini. As you can see, a huge jump. A higher bitrate means less compression and more info in the video file, so I expect that they will be able to withstand some heavier post-processing. 
It must be said that the files of the original Mini were quite fragile and only a very light editing was possible. The Mini 2, like its predecessor, had only one color mode, normal, which is very much usable as it is, out of the box. There is no flat color profile for increased dynamic range. I did like the color mode of the original Mini, and the one of the Mini 2 looks similar, with a very good level of detail and saturation, and a nice bluish tone. But this is only a first impression, and I will analyze the video capabilities in a specific video. Another excellent news is that the Mini 2 offers full manual exposure, as well as manual white balance, a paramount feature for shooting professional footage. Another big feature of the Mini 2 is the ability to digitally zoom while shooting video, up to 200% of 4K. It is possible to increase the zoom level seamlessly by holding the FN button while turning the gimbal tilt wheel in the remote control. And it does work very smoothly. Another way for zooming in or out is to simply drag up or down with a finger from the zoom round icon. But being an optical zoom, there is obviously a loss in resolution, but for users who deliver the footage in 1080p, it would not be an issue. Another great addition, in this case aimed mostly at users posting in social media. Note that there is also a 3x zoom at 2.7k and a 4x zoom at 1080p, but frankly I would not use it, as the loss in resolution would be very noticeable. Like in the Mavic Mini, there aren't any intelligent flight modes, but the list of quick shots has been increased by adding Boomerang. Only Asteroids is missing compared to the Mavic Air 2. I have done an in-depth video about quick shots with Mavic drones, please refer to it if you want to discover more about it. The sensor of the Mini 2 is the same 1 over 2.3 inches as the original Mini, with a photo resolution of 12 million pixels, frankly nothing to write home about. But the huge improvement is that it is now possible to shoot in RAW format, so we can now start to take photos a bit more seriously. As RAW files contain a much higher amount of info, I can stand serious editing. The lack of RAW support was frankly a big disappointment in the Mavic Mini. The Mini 2 also supports three different types of panorama photo. Sphere, 26 images, Wide, 9 images, and 180 degrees, 7 images. The photos are automatically stitched together to generate a JPEG file. But it is also possible to choose to save the images as RAW and then stitch them together manually in a software like Lightroom or Photomatics for better results. Please refer to my video about panorama photos with the Mavic Air 2 if you want to know more about it. Please note that the settings for photos are context sensitive. In other words, even if you choose to save your file as RAW in photo mode, you still need to choose again to save the image in RAW when you enter panorama mode. This can be a little confusing at first. As you can see, the list of new features in the Mavic Mini 2 compared to the original Mini goes on and on. But the really big ones that everyone was expecting remain 4K video, OcuSync, and raw support for photos. The main drawback is that it is still lacking any kind of obstacle avoidance, which means that a good deal of extra care is needed for safe flying. But that it is of course the price to pay in order to remain below the critical threshold of 250 grams. I think I will start using this baby more and more, especially in urban environments. I will be publishing plenty of videos covering in depth all the different aspects of this drone. So it is a very good idea to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Bye for now and stay safe.